After a long election and days of meticulous vote counting, here's what we know. A record-breaking 159.8 million Americans voted in the 2020 election. And a record-breaking number of those votes went to President-elect Joe Biden, who received over 78 million votes, roughly 5.5 million more than Donald Trump. And young people played a significant role in both of those records. NBC News exit polls tell us that 65% of those between the ages of 18 and 24 voted for Biden, 11% more than any other age group. And in states like Georgia and Pennsylvania, young voters proved to be key to Biden's success. This election, these young voters made up 9% of all voters. But as Generation Z, who's currently between the ages of 8 and 23 grows up, their impact is sure to be even greater. Here's how Generation Z left their mark on the 2020 election. One big variable in many of these states that we've gone to is the young vote. One of the key questions in this election is, is the role of the younger voter. The young people on both sides. That would be one of the most important stories of this election. This election is going to be my first. I just turned 18 years old. This will be the first time I am voting. This was my first presidential election. This is the first election that I have been old enough to vote in. This was my first presidential election. Voting is the most important thing we can do, and I'm so excited that as an 18-year-old and as a member of the youth, I can finally have a say in our democracy. I've been doing demographic analysis about the changing American electorate for two decades. We're looking at 53 to 55% of registered 18 to 29 year olds appear to have voted that may be the highest ever recorded and both generation z and millennials are voting generations the preliminary data says in fact this was the election with the highest turnout rate of young people that we've ever seen rosenberg says that this historic turnout of young voters was caused by a perfect storm of motivating factors it was the economic and physical dislocation of covid it was climate change. It was the protests that we saw this spring and summer, which really turned huge numbers of young people into political activism for the first time. And it was the gun violence movement that you know came out of Parkland. A number of things that appeared to be driving young people, level of participation and level of excitement about the campaign. It wasn't Joe Biden, though they certainly liked Joe Biden overall. They were voting more uh, against Donald Trump than they were for Joe Biden. Racial justice and systemic racism was a top, top issue for young people. And this is reflected in the fact that more than 80% of young people supported the racial justice movement that happened earlier this year. Indeed, the Black Lives Matter movement has been credited for inspiring vast numbers of young Democrats to register to vote. In early June, millions of people took to the streets to protest the police killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. During the first half of that month, 1.1 million Americans registered to vote, a majority of them Democrats. Upwards of three quarters of young people, regardless of party affiliation, supported Black Lives Matter protests. So for this particular demographic, that was hugely important. And while young people have long had a reputation for leaning left, Rosenberg says Gen Z's political preference is not a passing face. There's a great myth in life that young people are liberal when they're young and then they're more conservative when they get older, and that's actually not true. 20 years ago, 18 to 29 year olds were 50-50 for Bush and Gore. It was dead even. There wasn't a democratic lean to young people in that era. And now there's sort of a, a substantial democratic lean in every election by between 10, 15, and then up to 35 points. There's been a structural shift where young people are much more democratic than they used to be. This structural shift may be because of how young people see issues as interconnected. But the issues that matter most to young voters, defeating the coronavirus, um, jobs in the economy, climate change. But what's interesting to me um, in reviewing all of this, this research and listening to younger voters is that they recognize the intersectionality. All of these issues are interwoven. Young voters tend to take a more progressive attitude towards addressing each one of these issues. Cohen adds that another cause for the shift in party loyalty has to do with changing demographics. The millennial generation was the most diverse generation in the history of the United States, and then Generation Z came. And Generation Z is the most diverse generation in the history of the United States. It's because of the changing ethnicity and demography of the youngest age cohort in the population, um, becoming more racially and ethnically diverse, and therefore a little bit more democratic. And I think you're seeing that play out in voter preference. When you start to disaggregate the young vote based on race, you see different voting trends. To be sure, young white voters disproportionately supported Trump. 
53% of those between the ages of 18 and 29 voted for him. The much greater percentages of Black and Latino voters who make up larger shares of their generations than ever before voted for Biden. We spoke with young first-time voters across the country, and here's what they had to say about the issues they care about. I voted for Trump because basically everyone from Monroe County were real big Trump fans because I think Trump deserves it. Knowing that we can't face four more years of a Trump presidency is what really galvanizes me to not only bring myself out to vote, but my communities as well. I feel like he speaks for us, the ones that don't make a whole lot of money. I feel like he's there for us, and that's why I, I vote for Trump. I think that this election was a referendum on the last four years. From racial justice to health care to the state of our planet, there's a lot at stake right now. The biggest issue for me that I focused on while voting was immigration. Everything about minorities, Black Lives Matter. I have friends and family that are undocumented, so my vote definitely represented them. Climate change really incorporates it all into one single issue that we really have a timestamp to tackle within the next 10 years. Police reform, that stuff right now is at the forefront of my mind. The taxes, I worry for the taxes. I don't want more taxes coming out of my paycheck because I feel like I have enough taxes being taken out. And abortion, definitely abortion. Young people are finally realizing that in order to see change, for whatever change you want to see, you have to vote. You can't just sit around and wait for someone else to save the day. No one's coming and you have to save the day. What appears to be unique about young voters on the left and the right is that they tend to vote based off of issues rather than political personality. I think a lot of people were slightly reluctant about supporting some of the policies that Joe Biden represented. We know that no one man, no one president, no one politician is going to bring us to the ends and worlds that we're trying to build. Because whether or not you agree with every single thing he stands for, what his movement represents as a whole is far more important. The alternative, not voting, not supporting these policies, is definitely far more dangerous. And I think a lot of young adults understand that, especially in that 18 to 29 cohort that we have seen be so important in these last elections. But some wonder how permanent is this leftward shift of voters and what would it take to move them? I think there's still a, a lot of opportunity for competition for the Republicans going forward. They have a lot of attractive candidates who may run in 2024. And that said, I, I still think the group will lean heavily Democratic. And I think the real question is for younger millennials and Gen Z is will the Republican Party ever be able to reestablish itself as a legitimate option. Historically, young people tend to be more reluctant about their vote. They're, as a share of the electorate, they tend to be smaller than other groups in the population. But young people, in particular millennials and Gen Z, seem to be particularly enthusiastic about this election. Candidates and campaigns are waking up now to the fact that young voters are engaged, they are interested, they do want to be heard, they do want to have a seat at the table. The way that Trump handled the protests and the rallies, you know, this spring and summer, I mean, Trump really sort of the antithesis of a lot of, of Gen Z and younger millennial values. They didn't like many of the things that uh, Donald Trump stands for, and they were particularly concerned, I think, about racial issues and climate change. And if we do contact them uh, and invite them to participate, they in fact will do so. There's this overused narrative by a lot of people that young people are lazy, that they don't get up off their butts to do anything. And that's just completely false. Throughout all of American history, from civil rights to anti-Vietnam war protests, we've seen that young people have led the charge on every key social movement that has garnished and cemented institutional change in American society. And I think that's what young people are really bringing to light now. They're saying, you know what? Yeah, sure, this election is pretty high stakes, but we're not going back to brunch once this is all over. While it may feel like a relief for this election to come to an end, it seems unlikely that things will return to normal. And that's because Gen Z isn't going back to brunch. They're gonna protest and advocate and vote for years and years to come.